I came from your video uh, that you made about your three month rule yeah. around pretty well anything physical or intimate. Uh, wait a second. Okay. So okay. You, you think that the no kissing for three months dating rule is like no physicality whatsoever? No, no. I, I mean, I, I, I seen, I seen. So no kissing, no sex, no sleepovers, and there was something else there. Uh, no, so was, no exclusivity. Okay, so I, 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 I combined that into, um, you know, no. That's a, that's a lot of physical um, contact. Um, I disagree. Okay. So the reason why is because there are people who really near the beginning there, such as myself, uh, they, they kind of crave that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, if, if, if I may ask, um, what's, 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 what's your reason for, for having that rule in place? Okay. Um, so it's, it's no kissing and, and no sex. So there's a lot that can happen before kissing, but it's all shows of affection rather than sexuality. So kissing is a sexual act because the act that precedes sex is kissing. It's not a kiss on the cheek. It's not holding hands. It's not cuddling. It's kissing on the lips. So kissing on the lips is a sexual act. So the whole point of this is if I want to hook up, I'll go get a hookup. I'll go pick you up tonight, have sex with you tonight, drop you on the curb tomorrow morning. We had fun, right? There's, there's nothing wrong with that. And I've always said that there's nothing wrong with hookups. Um, I don't know what my body count is. I've had so much fun, I lost count. And I think everybody should go that way. Um, so, uh, I mean, if they want to. <laughs> I'm, um, but I'm here's the thing. Oh, so I, I agree with you. When I'm looking for a committed long-term partner, my criteria for hookup is two things. It's do I find them attractive enough and do I trust them enough to hook up with them? My criteria for husband material, baby daddy material, whatever the case may be, or somebody that I'm just going to make big decisions with, like buying a house, going on a world trip with. Um, I need patience and integrity and devotion and work ethic and financial responsibility and thoughtful and kind and consistent, helpful. They show up. They want to commit to me. I, I don't know if you're ever familiar with this happening, but I see, I see it a lot on my end with girls who say we're three, four, five, six, seven, eight months in, and I don't know what we are because we haven't committed to each other yet. Or when I ask him if he wants a relationship, he says he's not ready now. And so what we play when we kiss and have sex with the intent on choosing a long-term partner is a hoping game. I hope that you fill the list of criteria that I need in a partner. And when I kiss and have sex as a woman, if I kiss, like if, if we go on a date today and I'm looking for a long-term partner and I let you kiss me tonight and then the next day somebody says, can I take you out? I say, no, I'm seeing someone. Because once I kiss somebody, I'm seeing it through. But I'm kissing just to find out whether or not they're a piece of shit. In other words, I'm kissing having sex to get the data. What I teach as a dating coach is get the data and then kiss the right one. So there's a, there's a lot to unpack there. Um, for for those people who who, who don't know, uh, you know, after those those six, seven, eight, nine months, however long, you know, whether what what they are, uh, whether they're exclusive, whether they're not, uh, and they're really indecisive. Um, could that not just be blamed on, you know, communication issues um, or lack of? So here's um, like communication is as much listening as it is speaking. And so women who continue to stay with these guys that they're kissing and having sex with who are saying, I don't know, I'm not ready yet. They're not listening. They're not ready to the not ready yet. What they're saying is, oh, that means, yeah, that means maybe one day, right? And so it's like dumb and dumber. So it's one in a million chance. So you're saying there's a chance. Uh, and so communication on their end is they're not listening to a guy who's saying, I'll take advantage of the vagina, but I don't quite want a relationship at this time. Um, and then the not asking the right questions. Like so many women are afraid to ask, what are we? They're like, how do I have the what are we conversation five, six months in? And it's like, girl, why didn't you have this before you even started kissing?
Okay. My question. Can, can I say this one comment? That's my roommate. <laughs> I, 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 I'm a very opinionated person, so I, I love these kind of conversations. And by no means is this a call out. I just, like, I was in debate team when I was a kid, and I had the complete opposite opinion. Because I'm sorry if a man said that the reason he didn't ask a question is because of fear, he would be called out for it. And he would be <laughs> shut down. If fear is not an excuse, I'm sorry. Men no, are terrified day in and day out to do anything with a woman. The least you can do is have some balls and ask what the fuck we are. <laughs> and uh, by I, all means, I, th I think women should have that conversation before anything happens. No, and fair. But you are very, very right. Communication is 100% key. If communication was better, none of our problems would be problems. Like, yeah. I am in complete agreeance. I just, however, don't agree with any kind of statistics stating that uh, men are the problem because we don't no, no, come. Because no. if I'm honest, I've never been asked. She wasn't saying men are the problem. Oh, yeah. Okay. Men are amazing. Men are amazing. I love men. For what's the Ah, I, 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 I know I'm gonna finish the sentence, but you know where that you know the c word. <laughs> <is going laughs> so it's I I never said a man says I don't know what we are after five months. It's rare that that happens. It's women yeah. who usually say that. Uh, he, he he just walked in from work like halfway through our conversation, so he just picked up little bits and pieces. Yeah, I, I was assuming that it was like the usual kind of people that you duet with and that they were trying to say some bullshit. And then you said, sorry, some BS. And then you said, don't say anything. And I'm like, oh, because he knows I'm going to get mad. <laughs> um, we, I say bullshit here too, by the way. Okay. Um, we say a lot worse. <laughs> so... The way I see it, personally, is as long as there's communication between both parties, uh, and as long as there's consent between both parties, then why, why, why wait three months? Okay, well, as long as there's understanding, wait. Yep. So, when we kiss, we as women, and and here's let's let's just start with the agreement on our differences. Do we not look different on the outside? Um. Yes. And so uh, are we also different on the inside in terms of our chemicals? We are estrogen, you are testosterone. Your brain has a completely different chemical makeup than a male. Boom. Also the brain structure, also the way thought patterns happen. Now, when you take all that into account, are emotions chemically based? Yes. Oxytocin, dopamine, and serotonin. Now, when we kiss, are there chemicals that are created? Yes, Dope, dopamine, dopamine, serotonin. And serotonin, phenylethylamine, which is an aphrodisiac, amphetamine, and antidepressant. Since we are chemically different, the chemicals don't affect you the same way they affect us. Yeah. When we are in mate-seeking mode, we are mammals. When we are in mate-seeking mode and we kiss and create phenylethylamine, the signal to our brain is, "I chose a mate," and that's why I said in the beginning, we are all in which means we are so in, we're gonna miss the red flags. And it's important for us when we're looking for a committed long-term partner to not miss the red flags. Because yeah. then we're three years in a shitty relationship thinking, but I need to work at this because we're in a relationship. Yeah. Ooh, that's a toughie. See, then I guess really it comes See, down. There, there's, there's the difference between a man and a woman that, that you're leaving out about the, the relationship importance. You say that we are different, but you're also neglecting how we are raised different, to believe different, and to feel different. Like women, women are told that for the rest of their life, they are going to be unconditionally loved. Mm. There are only three things in life that are unconditionally loved. Women, parents, and dogs. Those are the only three things men are told from birth that you will be loved under the condition that you can provide. Provide whether it's money or safety or structure. We have to fundamentally provide something for us to be loved, theoretically. Of course, there's always the small percent that beat the odds, but in the real world, not the dream world, that is how it is. You can shake your head. Personally, I disagree. Well, personally, these aren't opinions that I'm stating. These are facts. Mm. That statistically, 95% of men are only loved after providing. 
That is a statistic. <laughs> if you watch the so, press and fit podcast, I was I was raised by an abusive mom. Uh, I was washing dishes or drying dishes actually from the time when I could stand on a chair. Um, and so I had to earn every single thing. Now we repeat what's familiar, even if it's wrong for us, I'm very common. So after leaving an abusive household, I then picked an abusive boyfriend and then cheater, cheater, cheater. Um, and so sure there's, you know, kind of like the generalities, but we need to get beyond the generalities to the person in front of me. And I don't know if the person in front of me had a conditioning. I don't know if the person in front of me has the ability to be abusive. I don't know if the person in front of me was helicoptered and so they don't even have financial uh, responsibility and work ethic because mom and dad did everything for them. And I don't know if the person in front of me is a compulsive liar. So I need to use a no kissing for three months dating rule and get that information before I kiss and become overly involved. So you've made that rule for, uh... Because one, it gives you time to get to know this person, get to learn those red flags. So, but is it is it because you, you you find that that once you give that first kiss, it's just like everything's out the window and you're open, vulnerable, or or like it's not even vulnerable. It's I'm in a chemical haze. Like if you guys do drugs, there's a difference between cocaine and heroin. Yeah. <laughs> So I might I might do some cocaine with you, but I don't want to do heroin with someone I don't know. I, I mean, fair. You know, I did <laughs> not expect that sentence to come out of a face like hers. <laughs> <laughs> like I am sorry, but no. <laughs> like she looks like fourth grade teacher. Like like think think okay, every junior high had that really, really like young, very okay, I'm not trying to be a flirt, but that very oh, that's young, all good, right? Out teacher and like that is her the one that comes in the fucking sunflower dress and like brings the kids chocolate in a little bowl like that, that's that's <laughs> not the i might do some coke but not heroin girl like that is not her. <laughs> so what about you are you gonna do heroin with someone you don't know sorry oh, come okay. in. heroin uh -oh. period uh <laughs> It's, it's, I'm not going to do well, coke either. Neither do I, but I'm certainly not going to do it for the first time with a stranger. Oh, uh, your speech, your speech. I know, I've done a lot of things for the first time with a stranger thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But usually you're doing the kind of stuff where you can keep your wits about you, right? Mm. So <laughs> that, how, how is it that you're able to differentiate? So, so you even said it yourself that uh, you are okay with, with hookups. Yeah. Uh, you know, going, having fun. You believe in that, you know, go have fun. Yeah. Yeah. So, so is that a rule for yourself during these hookups, like no kissing? No, 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 no. Like, like hookups is whatever, whatever, because I'm not vetting for long term. I'm vetting for short term. So there's selfish short term thinker. That's guy or girl mode. That's like, I don't want a long term relationship. I don't want to look after somebody. I don't want to take care of somebody. I just want to have some fun. Selfish short term thinking. And, so, and relationship minded is generous long term thinking. I want to look after somebody for the long term, but mm -hmm. you don't know who's who because people aren't wearing labels. And a selfish short term thinker might be lying about wanting a relationship in order to get into my pants. Because I mean, look, my pants are hot. So I need to make sure that the person in front of me is sincere <laughs> and not a liar. Um, okay, so then how. Again, to, to me, and again, this is how I'm, I'm comprehending it. It comes, uh, again, just down to communication. So why can I not have that same, uh, that, that, that same dealing uh, as, as I did with a, with a hookup uh, for those, that, that first little bit look, uh, working towards a long-term relationship? Why, why can't with the same so communication? I'm intent on finding a long-term partner. I'm, I'm done my hookup days, I've had my fun. Now my focus is on finding a long-term partner. And I have things that I'm looking for in that person. And I don't wanna to kiss to find out. I've already had my fun. I've already sown my wild oats. So I'm not in hookup phase anymore. 
Um, and so I'm not going to choose a long-term partner the same way I chose a hookup. There's a lot of people who kissed and have sex, first date, fourth date, and they're in a long-term relationship. It started as a hookup. That's fine. I don't discount luck or intuition. But there are a lot of people, and you've met a few probably, where it's like it's one bad relationship after another. And they keep doing the kiss to see where it goes, kiss to find out who the other person is. And it turns out they keep picking bad people. And when luck and intuition isn't working for you for picking a long-term partner, then you need a new tactic. And knowledge and insight is the tactic to use. All right. No, that's um, that's very insightful. Uh this. Th I mean, this is this is. I mean, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not using this information because because I'm out looking. Or, I'm in a. I'm in a very happy relationship right now. But I'm. I'm, I'm just. I'm, I'm. I'm just like. Like again, I, I just seen that video and I was just like, hold up, what? Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, it's a uh, very insightful. How uh, if, if, if how, how long have you been a coach? Uh, so I've been giving this kind of advice um, since for over twenty years. Um, I became a coach in twenty fifteen. That's when I branded, started writing books, then I got award in life coaching. Okay. No, I mean I I I got. I, I really have no arguments because, I mean, he, he, one, you can't you can't argue with 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 people's opinion. One sec, what's up? Um, he got more. Okay, first uh, thing, this is just how I was raised. Everyone is entitled to their opinions, and it's no one's right to argue with someone who has their own opinions. You can have your own, and I can have my own, but. By no means do I have the right to try and take yours away from you. Um, but at the same time, I mean, I, I have nothing else to really, 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 really throw throw in your darts because. Wait, are you trying to think of a debate for her? Well, well, no, it's, it's it's just I I have nothing because I have one comment that that you could put against her boundary of not kissing for three months. I have one comment. Okay. About equality. Okay, so I, I have a question for you about your three-month thing. Yeah. In that three months, you are said that you plan to learn about any kind of insecurity, red flag, problematic behavior, anything like that, right? Yeah. And you're also learning about him, his job, his money, his family, his life, all that stuff. Yeah. Now, if you're in an equal relationship, traditionally, a man is expected to pay for dinner. And in return, the woman is expected to either plan a second date, a kiss, or tell him goodbye, correct? Yes. Okay, so you're going to spend three months of going on dates and dinner and all this that he's supposed to pay for. Where, where is his kiss? That so is that. there's no... Uh, so for me, there's no should or supposed, uh, right? A woman should always be ready to pay for herself. Okay. The well, first... Yeah. Okay. I should we should always be ready to, to pay for ourselves at the very least. Um, the first two dates are a vibe check. So it should be a beverage and a walk, not a meal. Nobody should have to pay a lot of money for a vibe check. So we shouldn't have to pay $25 if we're going for a meal. You shouldn't have to pay $50 if we're going for a meal. This is why I say it because it's, it's just a vibe check. So meet for coffee, go for a walk, don't interview, do this, it's much easier. It's more, it's more companionship than an interview, less awkward, more comfortable. We get to the bottom of who you are faster when you're more relaxed. So everybody should be more relaxed. Do this, don't do this. Um, if he proposes a meal, say, that's, let's save that for down the road, but let's meet for at this coffee shop that I really like or this place and let's go for a walk in this neighborhood. And so if he pays... If he insists, it's like, oh, thank you. I really appreciate it. But we're, we're always, we always have reach for our wallet. We always are ready to pay. If you insist, noted brownie points. We also always need to be reciprocal. There are some men and we want a generous long-term thinker. So we are noting whether or not you're insisting on paying or not. But it's on us to be reciprocal. 
So listen, we got money. We let you pay for us. Like we have jobs now. It's okay. We got us. So we let you pay. If you pay, it's because we let you pay. Um, but if, if you've insisted on paying the first three times, I'm sneaking off and finding the waitress number four and making sure it goes on my credit card before the bill even comes to your table. Um, I'm, I'm looking for, for things that you need, like, uh, you need a new travel mug. Your, your travel mug is looking gross. Um, you need some snacks for your car cause you do a lot of driving, bring you a meal to work, making sure that whatever you do is reciprocated and dates don't have to cost money. This is about getting to know each other. So it's about spending time. And the reason why we're not kissing is so that we can talk when the mouths are not occupied, the communication happens. And I find out if you are good for me. All right. No, and I'm, yeah. I'm just going to address a couple a couple comments that I've seen scrolling by saying things about facts on, on my end. So I, I came into this guys with my opinion and I simply wanted to voice an opinion that I had. It, it, none, of, none of it on my end is necessarily based on facts. So I, 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 was just, I just wanted to hear it <laughs> in terms of my personal opinion. Um, so, so that was it. I mean, like, very insightful. Uh, you, you, you've, you've clearly done a lot of research. Um, obviously practiced it a lot. And it's, and, and it's working. Um, so, I mean, that, 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 that's awesome. Uh, I'm definitely going to keep up with, um, with your account and uh, watch more often. That's for sure. So you're in a relationship. How, they, how long have you guys been together for? Uh, we've only been together now for two-ish months, something like that. Okay. Um, any conflict? I mean, yeah. I mean, we, 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 we have very, very small conflicts, but we, we, we talk it out. Nice. Woody, is there like a theme to your conflict at all? Any kind of something that repeats or? Nothing repetitive, no. Okay. No. It's all just brand uh, new stuff. Up and we're just like, oh, yeah, let's talk about that. Nice. Good. Um, I do have uh, books for couples. They're called Fix That Shit. So if you guys ever find that you, you know, this, you're still in the honeymoon stage. But if you find that you guys start having conflict and you want to start learning how to resolve conflict, you're having symptoms of conflict, you guys have a fight, there's silent treatment for a couple days because you're working through thoughts and feelings, you wish you guys could come back faster, my books can help you with that. Mm -hmm. All right. No, I'll, uh, I'll definitely check, uh, check you and uh, dig, into, uh, dig into your stuff more, uh, more deeply for sure. Yay. And for anybody watching who wants to know how to use that no kissing for three months dating rule, it's my book, No More Assholes, that helps you achieve that. Perfect title. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, I, I appreciate you, uh, you you taking time and uh, chatting. Yes, yes. Nice, nice little kitty there. Okay. Yes. Bye. Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> All right. Love it. Thank you for chatting.